All right, so this is going to be a strenuous hike for me, but at the top of the ridge here, there's something I want to show you that relates to the old ways of sending mail across the country. And we used to stick mail on an airplane. We still do, but these were vintage airplanes. It was called air mail. So in the old days, pilots had to actually be guided by these giant concrete arrows that were placed on the ground. There's one up here. We're in Walnut Creek, California. And at the top of Akalati's Ridge here is one of the arrows, and we're going to check it out. But first, <laughs> I have to huff myself out there. Um, I've already hiked quite a bit from where the car is parked on the, the way, but I'm going to pan around here and show you the um, very nice houses that are populated throughout this area. Again, <laughs> there's, a, there's a hike ahead of me. Mail service in America first depended on horses, trains, and automobiles, but things changed with the invention of the airplane in 1903. The airplane allowed mail to be flown at much greater speed, an accomplishment celebrated with this 1928 stamp. The first documented case of official U.S. mail being flown aboard aircraft was in 1911, when Earl Ovington flew from Garden City to Mineola, New York. However, it wasn't until 1918 when the Post Office Department began scheduled airmail service between New York and Washington, D.C. The mail pilots of the 1920s ran mail on routes depicted on this map. We'll zoom in on this area of California. Absent the sophisticated avionics of today, the pilots relied on maps and flying low to the ground to be guided by these giant concrete arrows. The arrows also came with a night beacon for night flying. Beacon stations were built between 1926 and 1932. All right, so uh, we'll make our way up here. Hopefully we won't encounter any poison oak or rattlesnakes. Um, should be fun. Apparently this is a trail. I have no idea if it's the appropriate trail, but we're gonna see how it works. I'm actually already out of breath. Uh, hopefully it's not too high up here. I have a feeling when I get up here, the wind's gonna be blowing pretty good. But that's okay, cool me down. Well, as I predicted, it's pretty windy up here. I still have some more ways to go up here. Please appreciate what I'm doing. The wind is really whipping me and my camera around, but I see it. I see the arrow. Wow. Too bad they had to cover it all up <laughs> in graffiti. What you're looking at is some history. This arrow dates back to 1927. It's one of the rare one of the very rare double shafted arrows. As you can tell, they're slanted. Arrow number one here on the left it points to a beacon on Vine Hill, which is now the Concord Naval Weapons Station. And it uh, is aligned with the arrow that uh, if you go to Oakland City Stables, it's partially hidden, but uh, there is an arrow there that is behind me and it pointed to this arrow. And on the, the right side here, pointed to the Concord airmail field. It points to an unnumbered beacon on the San Francisco to Los Angeles airway. And now this, this flat part here is where the beacon was. There was a tall beacon here, so that at night, the pilots could actually see. It was a guest powered light. And I understand that somebody was actually up here, I lived up here, tending to it, make sure that the light didn't go out so that the pilots would always have a visual direction to go. As you can probably understand why they're angled. We're on the top of the hill. So if the pilots were coming from the south, they would see this first rather than have it sneak up on them and be a surprise. Oh, hey, there's an arrow here. Yeah, 
and once they were way up there they would look down and see which direction they needed to go gosh i can't i can't believe how windy it is up here but look at pieces of it are just falling apart well you can probably see that this arrow would have gone all the way over here but it obviously fallen apart in the last hundred years or so a uh, piece of rebar sticking out here imagine the the hands that crafted this are long gone of course the men who flew the planes by these signals were also very long gone fortunately somebody had to paint some nasty things up here check it out you can see the brackets the brackets that held up the the beacon tower here how would you like to have been the guy that had a hike up here and report to duty so I've lived in Northern California all my life and uh, I never knew about these mail arrows, at least this one being here on top of this hill. I cannot stress how windy it is today. It is crazy. And being on top of the hill, you're gonna catch most of it. You got all the wind coming from the bay all the way inland here, so it, it creates for a very strong wind. Now you can also see these holes right here, which uh, were for something. Uh, somebody put a battery down in that one. Also, I noticed something over here, right in the center here. Probably some electrical lines that were covered up here. But yeah, this, this cement is close to 100 years old. Crazy. So I imagine that a lot of teenagers and young people have come up here in the middle of the night, uh, partied, brought their beer, don't do that kids, and uh, brought with them cans of spray paint. And uh, unfortunately they've marked this up pretty good. I guess uh, in a hundred plus years or so, these arrows will still be here unless they find a way to remove them. The federal government of course put them in, but they left hundreds of them across the country. In fact, you can go out in the middle of the desert and encounter these arrows and they just didn't remove them it was too laborious and they thought well, whatever you know it's probably a forgotten artifact of american history but it's really strange to think that uh back when they were flying airmail those vintage airplanes a lot of them were army pilots as well that they had to use some primitive navigation skills looking at arrows on the ground for example and then of course later we developed technology the avionics and the the, um, the radar systems that preclude this kind of technology here. So I regret that there's not a lot to show you up here about uh, these slabs of concrete decorated with spray paint, but that's, that's all there's left from the technology. I was actually thinking I was gonna be able to fly my drone today and show you an aerial of what this arrow looks like from up there, but I have a feeling that if I set it up right now, it'd end up on the freeway down there dashed in a million pieces so I'm not gonna even try that today so from a high hilltop overlooking the 680 freeway in East Bay of California I want to thank you for joining us on this episode of history hunters did you know anything about these type of mail arrows and I'm curious if you've ever visited one of them maybe even accidentally the winds trying to blow me off this arrow if you could leave a comment that would be appreciated i know that uh, a good youtube friend that i recently discovered it's very good it's called the reno you know he did a recent show on the reno arrow i had intended to go there last year but uh, didn't have time to get to it happened to be in the cockard walnut creek area today and so i decided hey i'm gonna try to make the trek up to the top of the hill we would always appreciate a thumbs up you know how that goes you can subscribe to history hunters but subscribing alone does not help our channel you have to actually watch our channel for us to make a difference you know subscribers are great but it's the views that really count because we put a lot of effort into these videos thank you so much for joining us on this episode of history hunters